Welcome to another edition of the Varsity 4 Podcast. Justin Barney, Sponge Franklin, coming to you in a weird week, a hurricane-centric week. Uh, Hurricane Milton bearing down on the state of Florida, scrambling up our high school football schedule. We're going to kind of fly through this this week, and since the games are, are kind of bouncing all over the place, we're going to have a different format this weekend. What we've decided to do is if we were building our perfect high school football team, which, hey, taking a page out of the uh, NIL of college football where you can have a salary cap and all that stuff uh, coming down the line, Sponge and I decided to have some fun and pick four players who we would, we were starting our own high school football team, four players and uh, head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. So we decided to have a little fun and do a little draft and do something like that. Before we get to that, quick recap of last week. Um, Weird, kind of weird week last week as well. Reigns 52-12 in the Northwest Classic. Pretty expected uh, in that situation. They're just um, unbelievable. Nice 20-17 over Buholtz and OT last Monday night. That was a makeup of a hurricane, uh, original hurricane game. Bradford, big over Palatka. Um, Beachside, 29-26 over to Coy in our game of the week. Another good game of the yeah, week. Another, it, Block field goal it, to, to up, clinch it. Lived up to a, another tight race game. Like, it was back and forth, high flying action. You know, Beachside comes back and finally gets another another win against yeah. one of the top-tier programs, that you know, instead of a – a duck, as we'd say. So, nice win for those guys. Yeah, for big sure. time win, and and first win over the Toros in that series, short history. So, good one for Pete Duffy uh, and the Barracudas over there. Another big one I want to talk about: uh, Creekside 48-45 over Fleming Island. Yeah, the offense of the Knights has found its rhythm. It's kind of who we thought that the Knights were going to be initially this season, and it took them a little bit of time to get going. But they've won three in a row against three really good teams: Fleming Island, Winter Park, and Bartram Trail. Um, so, the Knights really kind of getting into that. Um, into that mode, so good to see them doing that. Not a lot of excellent games last week. I thought Sponge Riverside, yeah. um, thir- 28-21 over Trinity Christian. I thought that was a nice win for the Generals. Yeah, um, and a little bit of a step back for Trinity. They had a chance to win that game. They did. Like I, I was gonna, I was gonna touch on that. Like when I was saw the score, you know, it was back and forth. It was tight. A couple of big time plays, like you know, huge runs from from mm-hmm. uh, Riverside. Uh, Trey Williams had a big 90 yard touchdown rece- uh, reception. You know, Trinity had the lead 21-14 with five minutes to go in the game and lost. <sighs> you know, even even in a sense to send it to overtime, you're like, okay, uh, Riverside went down and scored on the Tayshawn Gelsey touchdown, so you're like, okay, it's 21 all. You know, let's not let's not lose this mm-hmm. game. Instead, they go three and out, punt it back to Riverside. Terrible punt, set them up short field. They go down, game winner. You know, just like. It's just like that's that's the sign of a young team. Yep. That's the sign of a team that you know just is still learning on the fly. But I will say again, you're you're playing against one of the you know high powered, high flying offenses, better players in the city, and you know you're competing with them. So good things for the young guys. I still see them growing up pretty well, and the schedule definitely lightens up the rest of the way mm-hmm. for Trinity. So I, I expect them to win the rest of their games, and then it's playoff time. It's just you know win or go home and. I still think that they're, you know, capable of making a run. It's just the the problem is who's waiting for you down yeah, there with Clearwater Center Catholic and obviously a uh, um, uh, uh, Chaminade. Yeah, no, no, not Chaminade. No, sh- yeah, 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 Chaminade Madonna. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, Champagne. I'm thinking of like American <laughs> yeah. Airs Plantation. All those guys. Yeah, Jeremiah Smith. He's still like nightmares. Yep. But yeah, so that that was a nice win for Riverside, definitely. And uh, like I say, the Trinity team's still massively growing up. Yeah, it's a young team for a, a young team for. A lot of schools in the area have young teams. A couple others from last week. Union County, 47. Zarephath Academy, 14. Yeah, your boys. Zarephath took, one. took <laughs> one on the chin. <laughs> you knew that was going to happen. Yeah, as definitely. good as Zarephath has been, yeah. uh, Ivory Durham has done a, a fantastic job over there building that program. Jordan Durham, second in the country in passing. But once you step up in competition, you got to look. And, and people hit me up on Instagram all the time. Why, why didn't so-and-so rank? Why didn't... St. Joseph was the big mm-hmm. one this past week. They proved to 7-0 or 8-0. Great start for uh, for them. But the competition, is you have to look at what you're facing with the competition on a, on a weekly basis. Zarephath, St. Joseph, yeah. Christ Church, those guys, you just cannot measure what they do compared to that. And I think it, you look at like a Union County, small rural school, they just rolled over. Yeah. So Union County is a very, very good school, For very sure. good school. Uh, Andrew Thomas has done a fantastic job down there. But when you're that small school and you're you're playing schools that are smaller than you or they did beat Episcopal, um, they have, Zarephath's had some good wins. But when you step up into that 
yeah. the, the true, what I consider the true competition, it's just not a match. And Christchurch has done it exceptionally well. St. Joseph has done exceptionally well. West Nassau has done exceptionally well. Um, but I think once you get to that next tier of competition, it's – it's just a different ball game. West Nassau uh, out, out to a 7-1 and one start. They had a big win over Fernandina Beach on Monday night football. So a good one for them. The Warriors uh, getting done under Gunnar Cox. Uh, Christchurch getting it done. But I think you've got to separate the two when you get to, like, the Riverside, Union Counties. Those guys are just operating at a different level. But still great starts for a lot of those smaller schools. Um, down to not a few, uh, only a few unbeatens left. Yeah. Nice, Reigns, uh, Bradford, yep. all unbeaten teams, all in our uh, Super 10 as well. Now let's shift gears to our Super 10. And how about Parker, huh? Two yeah. wins in a row for the Braves. Yeah, right. uh, good, good for Mike Holloway. How, you know, we're shifting gears into our Super 10. And I had a little bit of a challenge this week at at number 10. Um, I wanted to move Beachside up, but it just didn't make sense to move them up over Ponte Vedra. Ponte Vedra already yeah. beat them this year. So I kept... Uh, See, I already had Beachside in, so I, I, was, did. I, was, I was good. I had Beachside <laughs> in my 10 from last week. You were good. Yeah. So my 10th team this week, and I, I moved Baker County out. They were eight. Yeah. They lost to Godby. Yeah. My 10th team may race in my Bowser at Creekside at 3-3. Three and three. I think they're playing fantastic football. I would not want to play Creekside at this point in the season. They are just they're scoring some points they're, for they're sure. Getting it done. Big win over Fleming Island. So I've got Creekside at number ten this week. I left Beachside at nine. I did not want to do it. I wanted to keep them uh, in the Super Ten, but move them up, and it just did not work out this week. So I have Beachside at nine. Unfortunately, um, hey, who's my number eight team? Always, always, uh, always. It, you got Oakleaf in there? I got Oakleaf in there. Um, oh, Ponte Vedra's at 8. Yeah, yeah. Ponte Vedra's at, moves up from 10 to 8. There you go. Uh, they had a big win over Leesburg last week, so I've got them at 8. Oakleaf at 7. Mandarin at 6. Remember, they, uh, yeah. they played on Monday night. They beat First, First Coast, Coast. Uh, 27 yeah. to 6. So um, that game stopped early, I think, to let cooler heads prevail. Uh, Mandarin at 6. Nice win for Mandarin. They've won two in a row now after that two-game losing streak. Uh, Bowles at 5. They've got Jackson uh, this week on a Tuesday night game. Everybody get that game in. And ahead of the storm um, at number four, three, two, and one, all the yeah. same for me. Yeah. Uh, St. Augustine, Bradford, Nice, and Range. Range yeah. 52 to 12 last week over, over Rebolt. Yeah, basically, our top seven is exactly the same. It's Range, Nice, Bradford, uh, St. Aug, Bowles, Mandarin, Oakleaf. Then I have Beachside at eight. I've got Riverside still at nine because I still think, you know, you look at their two losses, who they lost to. Three losses. Yeah, that is true. Still, you got three. Man, and three. You got true, three, and three. True. You got three and three creeks out in there, <laughs> you know. But they, they, like I said, that first game, that first loss against Oakleaf, it's like, it's almost like out of sight, out of mind. Yep. But they did get waxed in that game by four <laughs> touchdowns. But I still like. It's weird. They're they're such a Jekyll and Hyde team where they can you know score a lot of points against Reigns and lose that game, but then only score fourteen against mm-hmm. you know uh, a Reball, and then you know yeah they scored twenty eight, but it was a you know tight game all the way until they scored those two touchdowns. Yep with five minutes to go with Trinity last week. So it's like, you, can they get that consistency where they can, like, blow it open the whole time? And that's that's the big question. I they, don't know. Yeah, they, they should be able to. They've yeah, got the playmakers definitely. to do it. And I've got Ponte Vedra at 10. So okay. I, I, mean, I still like what they've done so far this year, too. And they had a nice win, what, at Leesburg? Yeah, last Leesburg week? last yeah. week. Very good win so, for, yeah. for them. So, so pretty so. much we've all got the same 10, except you've got one additional. you got Creekside. i got Riverside. So. Yeah, so I think I think that's good. I think case can be made for uh, for both of those teams. But right now we're gonna shift gears. It, it's difficult to talk about this week's games because we have a lot that have been uh, postponed, moved with not a lot of dates, makeup dates. I imagine we're gonna see a lot of Monday, Tuesday games next week because yeah. a lot of these games that have been scratched for this week are district games. I, that's, what need about, to be, that's, that's need what to be played. That's what I was about to say because um, I knew that that was gonna be the issue because this is like a heavy district week. Yep. So. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of – I mean, can you do – what's the rule on if you have a Monday game versus a Monday and a Friday yeah, game? Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's the, you're going to see – I think you're going to see a, a good portion of this. Is there a rule against, like, no. playing in a certain amount of days? No. Okay. No. I think uh, I, I think what she needs to happen is they need to do what Georgia just passed where you have an extra buffer week in there built in for the weather games. And, yeah. You know, you're, you already have enough issues, especially in Georgia we, we saw with Helene – going up there and, and doing the damage that it did, you know, Ware County is still not open back up um, from from that storm. So yeah. you take the having to reschedule games so quickly out of the mix and let the communities recover uh, where they need to recover. And I really think Florida is behind the eight ball in doing that. 100%. I do think next year 
there will be something in place, especially with these two storms. It should have been in place long before now. In 04, yeah. we had three hurricanes back to back to back. And yeah, it was, uh, I remember St. Augustine that year didn't get its kickoff class again, didn't get its first week game, didn't get its second week game. So you're a month into the season before you can play a football game. Um, and that should be secondary, but you have kids that are in low-lying, yeah. flooded-prone areas and stuff. So I do think that FHSA will um, take that into consideration and bake in a bye week. Um, whether yeah, they, that, build, they build in these weather days for school. Yeah, you know, I, I, so it's, it's got to like, be done. It has to it has to be done. It's long overdue. Good to see Georgia do it. And I'll bang the drum for, for the GHSA all the time. I think they are a, uh, a leader from the administration side and leadership standpoint in um, the southern part of um, the country. I do think GHSA does it fantastic. Uh, Robin Hines, the former uh, executive director up there, did, did so many good things through COVID, through uh, this transition. He's, he's retiring, uh, though. So I do think GHSA, I think Florida will take a page out of that book. Switching gears to uh, to what we talked about at the top of the podcast. So not a lot of games this week that are, that are concrete and cemented. So Sponge and I decided if we were building a team in the an IL portal kind of area, an era that we are that we're living in. Who would be our first four draft picks from this year's class, from this year's crop of players? Not an all-time team, not last year, this year's team. So we went kind of an inverted draft. Sponge got one pick, I got another pick, then I got another pick. Sponge went. So we we went that way. We drafted four players, and we could draft any four players. So I went heavy in the offensive side. Sponge kind of had a more balanced out team. I only um, took one defensive guy. Yeah, but, yeah, but so I took I took zero. Um, so and then we picked uh, three coaches as well. So um, head coach, offense coordinator, and defensive coordinator. I mean, so it's so tough when you start thinking about trying to do that. Who would your guys be? Yeah. So Sponge had the first pick, and uh, I went with the uh, Lachlan Hewlett. Yeah, the the St. Augustine quarterback. I like I like the pick. I was gonna. I was going to take Lachlan, but uh, but Sponge had the the pick. Um, my pick was Tremel Jones. Like I say, if if, if it would have been reversed, right, I would have yeah. took Tremel too. So <laughs> we were kind of we were still in accordance. So yes. those so, are definitely the top. If you want a signal caller, those two are the guys you want for sure. So I mean, in all honesty, you can't go wrong either way, in my opinion. Um, obviously, health you know is a big issue. You wish that Tremel was still playing this yep. season, but you know it is what it is. If, still, if you were saying. Okay, clean bill of health and he's going to play for you all year you know Hewlett and Tremel. I think yeah you know. one or one two I think they're the best uh, two quarterbacks in our area my pick since it was back to me number three I went Jamie French yep. I think he's uh, the most dynamic playmaker in town and I think he can stretch a field so I, heavy on Mandarin Tremel and Jamie were my first yeah. two picks I, I went Mandarin as well but I went defense because I was like let me get the patrol man the the, the safety lockdown guy who can he can play safety corner. You can blitz your, you know, your your quarterback. I, I got Drake Stubbs. Yep. So. Drake Stubbs, a big pick, uh, pick six on Monday night. He's yeah. our reigning defensive player of the year. So uh, we know all about Drake. Um, my pick, my third pick to, to build my team, um, offensive lineman Solomon Thomas. So I yeah. told you, I went heavy on offense, and you see hey. exactly like that. Like I say, not not a bad pick <laughs> to get your cornerstone tackle. You know, to to, to protect for your boy. Uh, all right, Tremel. Hey. Your your next pick? It was uh I went with Carl Jenkins Jr. No, not it. You went with a big cat. The big cat. Uh, yeah, Rain. So I he. To, I want to solidify that defensive line. Yep. So yeah. two and two for Sponge. I did. Um, I did go defense. That's right. I did. So I mean, I Sponge went heavy on the defense. So I'm going to have my guys play both ways. My fourth <laughs> pick was uh, up into the Peach State. I'm building an offense yeah. for the ages. It's pretty good. Uh, Camden County tight end Elias Williams. Yeah. Um, I, I went heavy on it. So I like. Those guys. I hate that I didn't get any defensive guys, but we were. We said, "Hey, we're going to pick four players yeah. a piece to start our team, um, and and go from there." So mine: Tremel Jones, Jamie French, Solomon Thomas, and Elias Williams. I'm playing to score 100 points a game and win 100 to 97. <laughs> uh, Sponges picks: Lachlan Hewlett, Drake Stubbs, Tayshawn Gelsey. Oh yeah, I picked Gelsey. Uh, Gelsey. Yeah, I went because I gotta have you know the big target, man. Tayshawn Gelsey and Jion Simon. So we went four and four. Sponge has got two guys. So Lachlan's thrown to Tayshawn uh, and Drake and Jion are, are pressuring my guy Tremel Jones. So and then we went with three coaches. So uh, my my pick at head coach was uh, Bradford's Jamie Rogers. I think he's a program builder. Uh, done it everywhere he's been. So I'm gonna take. Jamie with my draft pick. Yeah, you I go. Took, I took V Man just because he's he's the goat right now. He's he's a longest tenured guy. Won a lot of games. Won a lot of state championships. You know he's just the guy who can you know he he can 
He could basically gel everyone, yeah. you know, he's going to get your offensive and defensive coordinator right. He's going to get the team right. He's a great motivator. You know, just been a heck of a coach for a long, long time. And I would have went um, with Jamie Rogers as my DC. But I know, but said, I, I swiped him. You, you took him from I him. I swiped so. him. So, okay, V-Man for, for Sponge, that's not that's not a surprise. I would have yeah, probably, exactly right, you know. uh, I would have I would have snagged V-Man too, but I knew you were, that would be a, a difficult one. V-Man is, I mean, he's a, he's a legend. Uh, my second pick at coach was Brian Braddock on the defensive side of the ball. He's San Augustine head coach. Um, done a lot of great things as an assistant and as a head coach. Yeah. So uh, I got Jamie as head coach and Brian as my DC. Yeah, I went ahead and gra- I, I would have grabbed I would have grabbed Braddock too, but I was like, you know, give me Kevin Mays down at Baker County. They've always got a good D. Um, you know, they're going to lock it down too. Here, Baker County and Bradford, they're, yep. they're very similar in styles. So give me Baker County's defense, and and you know, we'll, we'll be all right. I like it. I like it. And my last pick, OC. Um, Sean McIntyre is kind of in. A, I kind of had a, a tough decision here. I like Toby Bullock as an OC. He was yeah. the, uh, the Mandarin head coach now, but he's a fantastic offensive coordinator. Had Carson Beck, uh, Demario Douglas when uh, they won a state championship. But I like Sean McIntyre. Yeah. Creekside, he's really built something over there uh, on Longleaf Pine with the Knights. And man, it's just so tough uh, to do this. Your OC is like actually it. not a head coach. Exactly, he's not a head coach, but he dials plays up, and he's also. The dad of the quarterback, so they got good connection. I got Will Hewlett. You know, he's with uh, Denny in six points. He's, you know, quarterback guru. He dials plays up for, obviously, St. Augustine. So, got a little bit of the St. Aug connection there. But um, he could be a head coach, in my yeah. opinion, if he really wanted to be. You know, but I think, you know, just he's in a good situation where he's at now being, you know, the OC. His son's the quarterback. You know, so maybe he'll, you know, once Lachlan goes on to college, maybe if somebody wants to give him an opportunity, he wants to be a head coach, I'm sure. Somebody would uh, call yeah. the phone and say, I, I like our team. So for Sponge, we yeah. got uh, see, I thought, see I, what what happened was Carl Jenkins Jr. loved the kid. Yeah, definitely would have drafted, too. but I don't want to go too St. Augustine heavy. Yeah, so, so. half of my team is Madron. Exactly. Um, you got the quarterback and the quarterback's father yeah. on your team. Yeah. So uh, Sponge's team, Lachlan Hewlett, Drake Stubbs, Tayshawn Gelsey, Giant Simon, uh, Verlin Dormady, the head coach, Kevin Mays, D.C., Will Hewlett, the O.C., mine, Tramel Jones, Jamie French, Solomon Thomas, Elias Williams, Jamie Rogers, my head coach, Brian Braddock, my D.C., Sean McIntyre, my O.C. I, man, I, I, I love it. I, <laughs> I like good. Toby Bullock as an O.C. I like yeah. Matt Toblin in there um, as well. There's yeah. so many good guys to, to choose from. Um, it's just so tough when you do this, when you're fluff, trying to fluff out the team. I, sure. I would have probably taken Arthur Lewis as well. I mean, yeah. There's so many good guys to choose from, so it's really difficult to uh, to do this. But for Sponge Franklin, Justin Barney, a week eight edition of the Varsity 4 podcast. We'll come to you next week. Hopefully we'll have yeah, hopefully a little bit more games, going on. Um, our well, game we of the week. Any, we won't have any game recaps. Hopefully we'll have yeah. some game projections. Let's, we yeah. do. Ha- well, we will have some games next Monday night. Um, we're hoping to get some games still on Friday. This reminds me of a few weeks ago when – uh, we did still have a few games that right. Friday night. Our game of the week this week, if it goes off, is Fernandina Beach at Uly Nassau County Showdown. Always a good one there. Um, so that is a great robbery, and, and that those two schools know each other very well. If that goes off, they have not officially canceled school uh, on Friday or athletic events in Nassau County. So still waiting to get the um, the go ahead on that. But hopefully, we'll have uh, good weather next week. Everybody makes it through the storm. Uh, safe and sound, yeah, and, and hate that our, our friends down south are uh, probably gonna gonna get walloped by this storm. But uh, everybody, buckle buckle down. Sponge and I are gonna yep. do the same, and we'll come to you next week on another edition of the Varsity Four podcast. <laughs> <laughs>